Hey, what's up, fellas? This berkelinide reactor has been running for 37 days producing nitric acid. However, there appears to be a leak or a clog. As you can see, the gas flow is reduced significantly. So let's take it apart and check the concentration of the acid while we're at it. Yeah, screw all that. $80. Alright, so we had some problems. Look at that brown smoke coming out of the top of that thing. Definitely got a full charge of the uh, nitrous oxide, or nitrogen oxide, I guess I should say. Some of the liquid that was in that top stem dripped out and is burning a hole in the floor, so that's a great sign that moisture has turned into nitric acid. We did have some voltage issues with this thing. Uh, this thing still got quite a bit of that gas in there. So the spark the was doing spark something weird, I could tell, by the current draw. Look how big that spark's getting on occasion. It's grounding out to the frame. So this design in itself just sucks. We're going to have to redo it. We don't want this thing grounding to the frame. You can see there the Loctite reacted with the gases. So did the rubber. It turned white. Maybe that white stuff's coming from the rubber. I don't know. This white stuff's kind of mysterious, though. It's maybe coming from the electrode, it may be a white oxide, but I haven't figured that out yet. It has covered the entire inside of this tube here, so any glass lensing would have suffered from that. This is a kind of a close-up of the electrode. You can see there that right side is grounded to the frame, which is dangerous and was kind of counterproductive there because as we've seen in my other testing, the smaller sparks make more gas, not the big sparks. It's kind of counterintuitive, but you need that 3,000 degrees. There's another look at that white stuff. It's a very flaky, powdery substance. There's quite a bit of it in here, too. So I'd like to figure out where it's coming from. There's so much of it there. Kind of weird. But anyway, here's what happened to the bottom of this thing. This is the Loctite that dripped down out of the bolts that I had on there and it's reacted with the gases. Here's our valve that is completely clogged up. There must be some backflow going on or something because look at this. Copper nitrate is clogged up the valve. And here's the density check on that first beaker and we came out to 1.095, almost 1.1%. This liquid is 18 degrees Celsius. So based on this calculator that I found online for nitric acid, we are looking at a 16.6% uh, concentration in 37 days. Here is the secondary beaker and as you can see it's almost unjustified being in there. This might be wrong. All right, guys, two things on electrode gap and electrode composition. Some counterintuitive things took place in my research before I designed the exact electrode gap. You can see this large gap here. These are crap. That arc is not hot enough to produce a lot of gas. It will eventually, but it's nowhere near as productive as this tiny little one right here. However, this is done with tungsten electrodes, which is a big no-go. Now, we all considered tungsten to be the highest melting point metal there is, but what happens when a light bulb gets air in it? It burns out instantly, doesn't it? Have you ever turned on your TIG torch without the argon turned on? It nukes the tip in seconds. Tungsten metal cannot handle a temperature over 800 degrees Fahrenheit very well at all. You can see here I'm off-gassing tungsten. See that white smoke? And eventually it'll turn the entire jar white, so any glass lensing you have is destroyed. So we definitely made some gas, but there's this, there's still this strange white smoke in there, and I don't know what it is. My research indicated that a small hot gap like this right here with stainless steel electrodes was the optimal configuration, hence what we see right here. Setup we're gonna go with. Okay, got to put back together. Ooh, I didn't notice I had liquid in there. That's just my little sight glass. I decided I'm going to try and run this thing on high flow now. 
because the valve fouled out so badly last time. So we're at 16% after 37 days and we're at 2% on the second bottle. So that second bottle or the second bubbler is working. I need to get this out of the sunlight because sunlight destroys nitric acid. Okay, I got this thing up and running. It is now completely grounded from the unit so you can touch it without getting shocked. <laughs> whatever you did touch it, it wouldn't give you the full voltage this has to offer, but it would give you whatever was able to go through your shoes, which was a nice little tingle nonetheless. So to stop this valve from getting ruined, because I don't have a stainless steel one that I can put on there at the moment. I do, but I don't have an adapter. Got this white card in here for contrast. We are producing some brown gas, even at this high flow rate. There is still a visible difference in there. I just got that uh, so we can see it. All right, fellas, just a quick little recap here. We've got 100 watts for 888 hours. That's 37 days divided by 1,000 equals 88.8 .8 kilowatt hours. 88.8 .8 times 12 cents per kilowatt hour is $10.56 for a 1.5 liter bottle of 16 point or 16% solution of nitric acid. All right, so let's check the math here by doing this another way. If we do this by using joules, we convert to seconds. We have 3 million seconds times 100 watts gives us 319 million joules. It's 12 cents for every 3.6 million joules. So that 319 million joules divided by the 3.6 million joules gives us a number of 88. Sound familiar? 88.8 .8 kilowatts times 12 cents equals $10.56 for that 1.5 liter solution of 16% nitric acid. A 70% solution at one liter is $80. So we're still looking good here. So where are we at on concentration increase? The last time we did a test, we were only climbing at about 0.2% per day. So it's doubled. With this projection, we can deduce that we will be around 30% solution in 32.5 days. So I don't know, this makes sense. Just so this makes sense to you, if we have 30%, and we're currently at 16%, 30% is our target. We need to achieve 14% more. 14 divided by 0.43 equals 32. If that's per day, if 0.43 equals a day, then that's actually 32.5 days.